Pranks are a part of everyday life. We use pranks to entertain and to ease tension in awkward social situations. But sometimes, pranks go horribly wrong, and the consequences can be damning. Today's case begins with a prank that ended up having a snowball effect and ultimately destroyed a family. Compounding the situation was that the entire drama unfolded on social media. But what happens when the joke is over? Who do you blame when it all goes wrong? Hi, and welcome back to M7 Crime Storytime. Today, we look at a case full of twists and turns. You'd be forgiven for thinking it was the script from a silver screen mystery. This case is insane enough to make you believe it's a work of fiction rather than fact. Without further ado, let's dive in. Our case today takes us to a new territory. We venture to India, the home of Spice and, more importantly, Bollywood. In this episode, we visit Kalam, one of 14 districts in the state of Kerala. Kalam is best known as the cashew capital of the world and is the largest exporter of processed cashews in India. The Kalam port was made famous by its role in the international spice trade. During the early years of civilization, Kalam was known to have had trade relations with both Phoenicia and ancient Rome. Today, though, it's captivated the public's interest for much darker reasons. Tuesday, January 5, 2021, was a typical morning for 55-year-old Sudar Shahan Pillay. He'd left his modest home in the village of Kaluvathukal in Kalam district and visited the local temple to perform his morning prayers. After completing his daily ritual, Pillai returned home and went to the kitchen to make himself a cup of tea. Sitting at the kitchen table, he savored the sweet hot drink. Little did he realize that the serene morning was about to be shattered by a shocking discovery. Rishma Farma, his 22-year-old daughter, came barging in carrying something in her arms. She looked distressed as she called out for her husband, Vishnu, and her father, Pillai. Both Pillai and Vishnu rushed to see what was happening and realized she was carrying a newborn baby. The child was still alive with the umbilical cord still attached. He looked healthy, according to Pillai. Within moments, neighbors began pouring into the family's home, having heard about the discovery made by Rishma. According to her, she'd heard a baby crying and found the child dumped on a heap of garbage and dried leaves behind their home. Speculation began among the gathered crowd as they pondered who could have been the child's mother. No one in the neighborhood had recently been pregnant. Within half an hour of the baby being found, the ambulance arrived and hurried the newborn baby boy to the Government Medical College Hospital in Parapalli. Unable to help the baby, they later transformed the newborn to Sri Adivam Thurinal, a private hospital in Thiruvanathapuram. Back at the Pillay household, several emergency units arrived to begin assessing the crime scene. Police officers, health officials, and a canine squad arrived and fanned out to search the area for any clues relating to the abandoned baby boy. It turned out into a feverish hunt to find the parents responsible for abandoning the newborn child in such an appalling manner. Several news outlets also learned of the tragic discovery, and many reporters descended on the normally quiet village. As investigations continued and reporters asked questions, doctors and nurses worked with urgency to save the child. Unfortunately, by that evening, everyone learned that it was too late. The child passed away after suffering heart failure due to a congenital ailment and a respiratory infection caused by the debris from the dried leaves that had been lodged in his trachea. Neighbors, friends and family gathered at the Pillay household to support the family through this traumatic time. They knew the Pillay family were good-natured and upstanding citizens who wanted to help the child. Rishma herself was a young mother. She'd been very involved with trying to help the police find out who the mother of the child was during the search of the crime scene. A case of homicide was lodged by police, and for the next several weeks, investigations into the death of the newborn continued in earnest. Accredited social health activists from the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare were deployed to Kaluvathukal and neighboring villages to interview and look for women who were pregnant or had recently given birth. Investigators worked with hospitals and clinics to obtain CCTV footage and looked through various records and databases to see if anyone had registered at their health facilities for prenatal treatment or had visited the facility to deliver a baby. 
Investigators also obtained cell phone records from the towers in the area to ascertain if any of the numbers that pinged off their networks could lead them to their suspect. All these efforts were in vain, as no one could be identified or eliminated. As a last resort, investigators obtained a warrant from a local magistrate that allowed them to take DNA samples from those suspected of being responsible for the crime. These samples were collected and tested against those taken from the newborn child. It was going to be a long process. With COVID-19 infections surging and the Kerala Assembly elections taking place, many of the officials investigating the case were shifted around and given other duties in other regions. Meanwhile, the Palais family continued to cooperate with investigators in helping to find the parents of the unknown baby. It was a shocking discovery in their normally peaceful and family-oriented village. For five months, villagers continued to question how the baby boy came to be in their little village of Kaluvathukal. They also questioned the behavior of the person responsible for the crime. The Pillay family were held in high regard in their village, and the community commended their hard work during the investigation. It truly was a shocking event. But the real shocker was about to turn the investigation on its head. The villagers were about to discover a bizarre twist in the case, something that undoubtedly left them questioning if they truly knew their own neighbors at all. On June 22, 2021, police descended on the modest Pillay household with a warrant of arrest for Rishma Varma, the woman who discovered the newborn baby. The discovery of the baby had already swept through the village like a wildfire, what they were all about to hear next was bound to open the floodgates of a sordid tale of deception. It was a disturbing turn of events to discover that the person being hailed a hero was, in fact, a wolf in sheep's clothing. DNA results proved that Rishma and her husband Vishnu Varma were the biological parents of the newborn discovered in the dump. Rishma was then charged with killing she was arrested and taken into custody at the Chattan Noor police station for questioning, where she told the investigators a story of finding love and how it turned her into a murderer. In early 2020, Rishma had allegedly befriended a man named Anandu on Facebook. It started off as an innocent friendship, but soon evolved into more, and Rishma began to fall in love with Anandu. With social distancing restrictions in place, and a pandemic that was changing the lives of everyone, Rishma clung to the relationship with Anandu as a way of escapism. According to family members, Rishma and her husband Vishnu had a loving relationship. There had been no signs of abuse or neglect. It baffled family and friends as to why she sought to have an affair. She'd never spoken to Anandu or saw a proper picture of him, yet she felt a connection according to her confession. As restrictions eased off during the year, Anandu had suggested that they meet at a beach town about 15 kilometers away from Kaluvathukal called Varkala. Rishma made her way to Varkala but was intercepted by her husband Vishnu, who had allegedly been tipped off by a mutual friend. They argued about the incident and Vishnu broke her cell phone, but Rishma eventually gave in to Vishnu and seemed to accept that her relationship with Anandu was now over. However, that was not the case. Rishma continued to speak to Anandu using another relative SIM card to chat. When she discovered she was pregnant, she knew that it would be almost impossible to run away and elope with her lover, so she decided to keep the pregnancy a secret. Being of a slight build, the deception should have been near impossible. Rishma made use of body shapers and wrapped claws around her waist to keep the bump from protruding. She also complained of severe menstrual problems and backache to avoid intimacy with her husband. Rishma also hid her pregnancy from her lover Anandu. She feared he may not approve of their attempts to elope if he knew she was carrying Vishnu's baby. She allegedly gave birth to her child in the washroom of her home in the late evening of January 4, 2021 and then dumped him behind the house. It seemed abandoning her baby was the only way she could envision a future with Anandu. She created a diversion of discovering the baby in order to take away any scrutiny from herself. However, this ultimately led investigators right back to her own doorstep. 
Vishnu had been away at work in the Gulf region when he heard the news of his wife's arrest. He'd been baffled by the story and claimed he had no knowledge of Rishma's pregnancy. Vishnu spoke with a local news station upon his return to India. I didn't know she was pregnant. If I'd known, this wouldn't have happened. She gave me no reason to suspect such a thing at all, he said. When reporters asked about the alleged fight between him and Rishma, Vishnu explained that it was a moment of weakness on both their parts as a couple, but for the sake of their daughter, he forgave Rishma, who promised she had ended the relationship. Police soon cleared Vishnu of any wrongdoing, as he had provided legitimate proof that he'd been away from home for most of her pregnancy and was unaware of what had been transpiring in his home. In an interview with Rishma's father, Sudarshanan Pillai, he said that Rishma had given no sign of being pregnant. There were no symptoms of morning sickness and she showed no unusual eating habits. He only recalled that she complained of exhaustion and body pain, but that was normal. According to Pillai, the family had spent an entire day, the weekend before she gave birth, traveling on a tour of temples and not once did Rishma complain or show any signs of discomfort or pain. She traveled the entire day in a car without complaining of unease even once, he said. But this was not Rishma's first time deceiving her family. When she was 18 years old, her husband Vishnu had come to the Pillai household to ask for her hand in marriage. Rishma and Vishnu had met when she was still a teenager and quickly fell in love. Their respective families did not have an issue with the two of them being in a relationship. They had both come from respected families in the village of Kaluvathukal. But unbeknownst to either of their families, they had consummated their relationship before having a formal proposal or getting married. According to reports, the couple wanted to be together and Rishma asked Vishnu to speak with her father. At the time, she was four months pregnant, but had kept the secret from her family. Pillai allowed the marriage to take place, but was not happy about it. He'd wanted Rishma to study and have a career for herself, but she wanted to get married and live with Vishnu. In an interview with a local newspaper, he said that he wanted Rishma to be happy with her life and did not want to stand in her way. A few months after the wedding, Rishma gave birth to a baby girl. It was then that her family realized that she'd been pregnant all along. Rishma and Vishnu's daughter was, by then, four years old and the apple of her grandfather's eye. A neighbor of the Pillais also spoke about how Rishma had fooled them all following the discovery of the baby. He posted a photo of the baby on Facebook, believing the mother was someone from their neighborhood. Rishma, he said, was always on the scene, willing to help. Rishma was at the center of that melee. She was very calm walking all over the place and talking to everyone. There was no reason to suspect her at all, he said. Now that investigators knew the reason behind Rishma's crime and a little about her background, they began to look into Anandu's Facebook account and wanted to ask him a few questions regarding the incident. Police found hundreds of text messages exchanged between Rishma and Anandu. It looked as if the two had been planning to run away from their lives together and start somewhere anew. Investigators were hopeful they could get the answers they needed from Anandu. But there was yet another unexpected twist in this sordid tale. Tracking Rishma's online lover proved futile. There seemed to be no such person. Police discovered the account had been fake. Rishma's father recalled that she'd once traveled to Varkala to meet with a friend on Facebook, but did not say who it was. He said that Vishnu and Rishma had a heated argument following the incident, but nothing more came of the issue. He also mentioned that Rishma seemed too attached to her phone and spent hours chatting and sitting online with her friends. Police surmised that whomever had created the fake profile was catfishing Rishma and she'd been scammed. Rishma, though, refused to believe what the police were telling her about Anandu. She was adamant that he was a real person. Unable to trace the account themselves, police officers made contact with Facebook administrators to help in the investigation. Meanwhile, they looked through Rishma's accounts and cell phone records. Investigators were about to uncover yet another twist, one that possibly involved more than just Rishma as being part of the plan to abandon her baby and elope. They discovered that after the Varkala incident, 
Rishma had begun using a SIM card belonging to her sister-in-law, 23-year-old Arya Varma, the wife of Vishnu's brother, Renjith Varma. Investigators made contact with Arya after learning that she and Rishma were particularly close. They were also good friends with their niece, 22-year-old Grishma. Both women were summoned to the police station for questioning, as investigators suspected they may know more about the man named Anandu and the death of the baby. What happened next threw investigators into a tailspin. The case was about to take yet another dark twist that at first did not add up. On June 24, 2021, Arya and Grishma failed to report to the police station. Investigators set out to visit both of their homes and discovered both women had gone missing. They tried tracking their social media activity and found that both Arya and Grishma had suddenly fallen silent on the afternoon of June 24, 2021. Having already gotten hold of cell phone tower signals for the initial case, investigators were able to track their location to a spot near the Ithikara River, a river known for its dangerous currents. CCTV footage located near the area revealed that both women were last seen walking near a road close to the river. Fearing the worst, dive teams were assembled and a search of the river and surrounding area were conducted. On June 25, 2021, the bodies of both Arya and Grishma were recovered from the river. Police later discovered a letter written by Arya. Arya wrote about the ordeal they suffered because of Rishma's selfish actions. I never wished to cheat anyone intentionally. I didn't realize Rishma was such a crook. I've only wanted to see their lives getting better. Please take good care of my son. I wasn't finished enjoying my life with Ranjith, but I cannot bear being arrested by police in a case involving the killing. Please forgive me, it read. Police initially believed that both women knew of the plot concocted by Rishma to abandon her newborn and run away with her lover. For a while, it was believed that all three women were hatching a plan to help Rishma find a way to escape her marriage and her home. This theory was supported by the family, who claimed the three women shared a close bond. However, they were confused by their actions, as Rishma had seemed happy with her life, and Vishnu had only ever been a hardworking and faithful husband. Rishma also allegedly told police that both Arya and Grishma knew about the baby. Rumors began to spread in the village, and the Pillay family shied away from public scrutiny. But the story was not so simple. More revelations would prove that sometimes an innocent joke can have severe consequences. It was then that a close friend of Grishma came forward and provided police with sworn testimony that proved Rishma was the only person responsible for abandoning her newborn baby. This friend, who wanted to remain anonymous, revealed that Arya and Grishma had been the two women responsible for creating the fake Facebook account of Anandu. It had started as a prank between both women, but soon spiraled out of control. Both Arya and Grishma wanted to see if Rishma would fall for another man while being married to Vishnu. This was after they discovered that Rishma had created several different Facebook profiles and was chatting to other men while Vishnu was away working. They started to chat with her and began having a virtual affair. Neither of them knew how serious Rishma was about leaving her husband, nor did they have any idea that she was pregnant. They went as far as to hire someone to go to Varkala when Rishma arrived for the meeting with Anandu and report back to them. Then they also secretly tipped off Vishnu, hoping he would find Rishma and find out she was carrying on a virtual affair behind his back. According to the friend, both women had no idea that Rishma had fallen so desperately in love with Anandu that she would stoop to this level. The testimony was backed up by Arya's mother-in-law, who confirmed that the day following Rishma's arrest, Arya had become tense and agitated. Her entire personality turned dark. Arya's mother-in-law then said that Arya told her she had made a huge mistake. She went on to tell her about how she and Grishma created the Anandu profile on Facebook and how Rishma was chatting to another man while she was married to Vishnu. After what had happened, Arya felt enormous guilt and both she and Grishma were too ashamed to continue living. 
Both families then had to grapple with the effect that the social media prank had had on their families. The disaster it has caused made them wonder if they really knew their loved ones as well as they assumed they did. The tragedy suffered by the Pillay family has altered their entire lives. They've been left shell-shocked by the events. Following her arrest in June 2021, Rishma was diagnosed with COVID-19 and was treated at a woman's healthcare facility. She recovered and has since been in police custody awaiting trial. Her father, Sudarshanan Pillay, said that they'd always wanted a grandson in their family. Rishma could have said one word and we would have raised the boy, he said. The Varma family too has suffered a tremendous loss. They've lost two daughters in a senseless manner. Similarly, they feel there's no point in digging deeper into what caused all the drama in their quiet lives. Renjith, Arya's husband, has simply moved on from the situation, unable to find any reasonable answer to his questions. Everything is over, isn't it? There's no point talking about anything now. This family tragedy has only highlighted the misuse of social media. Kerala's column district, like many other parts of the world, is filled with restless young people who often make use of social media platforms to interact with and make more friends. The number of people who rely on social networking has surged in the last decade, and the lines between reality and fantasy are fast becoming blurred. In recent years, studies have shown that social media has been linked to many cases of infidelity, primarily because the internet has made it easier for people to connect and begin affairs. For the majority of people who conduct these online affairs, it's more of an emotional affair and a crutch to escape a doldrum life. But in a few cases, such as Rishma's, these emotional connections can spiral out of control. In the end though, it's a human decision to either follow the path of temptation or fight against it. Today's case has raised some important questions such as, is social media to blame for Rishma's actions? Or would she have eventually fallen into temptation's trap with or without this modern convenience? Should we blame the pranksters for the consequences that followed in this particular case? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.